everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Male Perspective. I am your host, Lana Reed, and today, 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 I have with me Mr. Aime Mukende Jr. Jr., Jr., Jr. There's another one floating around. Woo-hoo. Thank you. Thank you for hanging out with me. Welcome to the show today, dear. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm excited to get this conversation rolling. Awesome. Now, uh, you are, I didn't give the whole spiel, but you are a motivational speaker, you're a social media influencer, and you're author of the book, Everyone Needs a Hero, Why Can't It Be You? Did I get it all? Yes, you did. (laughs) Great, great, great. Now, uh, let me go ahead and start off with the book. Um, If I read correctly, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, it has a special connection to your mother? Yes, I, my mother is my hero and I released the book this year on her birthday. So that, that was a special connection to my mom. And it, ironically, this was the first time that we didn't spend her birthday. No, I'm, I'm wrong. Second time we didn't spend the birthday together. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the major connection. A lot of uh, some of the things I expressed in the story in the uh, opening section are connected to some experiences that we went through together. So um, that's, yeah, that's my hero. And um, she definitely was a major inspiration for me writing the book. Okay. What, I mean, what all is the book about? So everyone needs a hero. Why can't it be you? It's, it's about all of us, mm-hmm. all of us going through different obstacles and overcoming those obstacles. So, I dig deep to open up and I share some experiences that I don't think a lot of people knew. So I don't think me and my dad ever had a conversation about my mother being in a domestic violent relationship. And I talk about uh, a particular situation where I remember being 13 years old. It's um, right before the bus comes for school. And he had her pinned against the front door and I walk up to him and I grab the man on the shoulder and he tosses me across the room. And I just remember being 13 years old and thinking, like, when I get to be an adult, I'll never let another man do that to me. Um, so it talks about those different type of experiences, but then it also leads into a blueprint on how anybody can be amazing. So my name is A. M. McKinney Jr., a.k.a. Sir Amazing. That's how you can find me. And really what amazing stands for is not me, but it's amazing that you have this platform that you allow me to come on. It's amazing that even through a pandemic, we have resources like Zoom to still connect and speak with people. It's amazing that any of us are even born. The chances of being that one sperm of the trillion to come through and connect with the egg through conception is amazing. So that's truly what the story is about. The book is about better yet. Great. Now, I mentioned uh, a few seconds ago that you are a motivational speaker, social media influencer. You've got this book out. Uh, it seems to be a very extra extroverted personality but you were not always that guy were you (laughs) oh you got some good research (laughs) i'm a lady i'm a female you know we the fbi i done been in there (laughs) hopefully i got too many uh, and maybe a few trying to look up some information uh so honestly i still at my core am an introvert i think it's just part of the purpose is to he blessed me with the voice. People say they like my voice. And sometimes mm-hmm. words come to me that make sense. And I try to to walk in purpose and try to make sure that the light that he puts in me shines as much as it can be. Um, but yeah, I grew up introverted. I mean, I'm still introverted now. So COVID-19, the social distancing, it, you know, based on my experience I had last summer, it wasn't really much of an adjustment for me. I'm already a pretty, I'm a pretty closed person, even though, I'm in a room where I'm connecting with people on social media, doing virtual events, constantly networking. I still need my moments to like recharge. So that's a great question. You're the you're the first person who openly knew, <laughs> already knew that I was introvert. I'm an introvert. So that's, a, that's, that's cool. I, I was I was in there. Now I'm, <laughs> I've been in I've been in there some more. So this is my next question. Okay. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> Look, he's like, I got a brace myself. He's like, I got a brace. I 
love it. I love it. No, it's, 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 it's painless. I promise you it's painless. I don't buy. So I was reading the um, table of contents on the book. And then I was also doing my research. Um, I, I listened to one of your um, talks that you were giving. And you have this concept, a, a talking point called uh, the big three, right? Ooh, yep. So I want to know more about that because I'm nosy. Okay, so if that's the case, then you're going to have to grab a pen and paper. All right, so at the top of your paper, you're going to write your name and today's date. And then right underneath that, in quotes, you're going to write big three, B-I-G three. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give you the definitions to write out, and then you can actually compile your list. So number one is one thing that you like to do one thing that you like to do number two is one thing that you want to improve one thing that you want to improve and the third one is one goal that you have for the end of the quarter we're in q4 so one goal for the end of the quarter and then you can you can write out your list i'm gonna give you a couple seconds now see you see i just reversed it real quick <laughs> Mm. Those are kind of the same thing, but they flow. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to share my big three and then so to be an example of how you can share your big three. So Today, today's the 22nd, okay, so. Hello, my name is Amen McKinney Jr., AKA Sir Amazing. Today's date is October 22nd, 2020, and my big three are as follows. One thing that I like to do, I like to read a lot. <laughs> One thing that I wanna improve is, I wanna improve my body and my diet. Um, and I tie them as one, you're not supposed to say and, but I wanna tie those together. And one goal that I, I have for the end of Q4 is to be able to give away uh, multiple scholarships this year through the Morning Star Miracles Foundation. I'm ready. Well, mine ain't really as amazing as that. <laughs> I need to regroup. I need to revamp no, my no, list. No, 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 no. <laughs> you don't got to revamp nothing. See, the, this is the the thing about a big three is it's your big three. It's personal to you. This is supposed to be my interview anyways. Okay, so I'm a participant. <laughs> okay, so hello, my name is Lana Reed. Today is October 22nd, 2020. And uh, my big three or number one is one thing I'd like to do. One thing I like to, one thing I like to do, right? Is eat yep. double stuff Oreos. Ooh. The one thing, um, I want to improve is my cardio routine because I like my double stuff Oreos. And then my one goal before the quarter is over is I'd like to somehow magically get a six pack. Magically, huh? Well, I guess maybe that's my cardio routine. I could, you know, tie that in, you know. But, but you know what? And the Oreos, I probably need to stop doing. <laughs> so look. But here's the thing, right? Because now, now, now I'm going to break it down. So here's you asked about the big three. You want the nitty gritty behind the big three. So essentially, right, you want to improve your cardio so that you can get a six pack so that you can eat all the double stuff Oreos as much as you like, right? Yes. Like the, exactly, right? Yes. Like that's, that's the whole concept. Awesome. Um, I see. I see. Three. I see. Okay. Everything is tying in together. I love that. Yeah. yeah I yeah. saw you speaking. I said, let me see what this is about. Let me be all <laughs> nosy and everything. Okay. Okay. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Okay. So that's one awesome and amazing, amazing thing that you have going on. You have so much more and I'm, I'm not going to get to it all, but I'm going to try to pack it all in here as much as I can. Um, one of the things that, uh, is really up my alley because I do a lot of relationship stuff and, and that really boils down to men understanding themselves, women understanding themselves, and then we understand each other. But you're putting together a documentary right now uh, about healthy masculinity. And um, 
I'm curious to know uh, what that is. Because, well, how old, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? How old do you think I am? 20 something. 20 something. <laughs> Huh? 20 something. 20, 27. 20, okay. I'm 51. Okay. So masculinity for my generation is quite different for completely different, completely different for the 20-something. So uh I'm curious and open-minded to hear what healthy masculinity is for your generation. I, I I've got a great answer for you. I don't want to lose this before we move on from the big three. So there's three more steps to the big three. But okay. the final steps to the big three would be you would put an X in the line at oh. the bottom of the paper and mm -hmm. you sign it. You're okay. making that agreement. You're signing that contract with yourself. The next step from there is you would, you, I'm going to need you to take a picture of it and send it to me. Take a picture of your big three and send it to me. And then the third thing is by you taking that picture on your phone is you read that every night before you go to sleep. So did you start to train your subconscious mind to move you towards your goals and what you want to improve? Read it every single night. So every single day. Okay. There we go. Like brushing, I wanted to wrap like up the big three. Just like brushing my teeth. You got to do it every day. Every day. You know what I'm saying? You could take some days off, but it's going to catch up to you. <laughs> be like, whoo, baby. Whoo. You ain't talking too much, boy. Go be an introvert over there, boy. <laughs> <laughs> all righty so i'm gonna i gotta take a picture send it to you sign my little contract and everything all right but now i'm gonna go back to because i jumped ahead you know that's ladies we jump ahead <laughs> so now i want to um, know about healthy masculinity for a 20 something year old um it's very interesting i think it was a really really great experience putting together this documentary right now it's in post-production and understanding that it rooted from a program it's a partnership with Cornell University. So two years ago, uh, I started to go to different schools. Um, I'm originally from Buffalo, New York. I went around different schools and Buffalo public schools and surveyed young men that look like us between the ages of 12 and 14 on healthy masculinity. So some of the questions on a survey were like, making fun of your girlfriend's legs or even talking about how often you watch porn. And that was just part of, part of the project. The other part was, there were 10 facilitated sessions at some particular sites where these young men would have a facilitator come in and basically create a safe space in that round circle environment so they can learn about some different experience, talk about them, and then just express themselves. So um, those were two key elements that went into this project. And I wanted to give that background before I provide my answer because interviewing some of the facilitators, the, the, the greatest answer, or I thought the most and one that really resonated with me was a gentleman said to me, he said, healthy masculinity is being strong enough to be gentle. Mm -hmm. And when I really think about it, especially for African-American man, a black man in America, Part of the, what motivated me to put it together in the way I did it was George Floyd. Because like, when mm -hmm. I think about George Floyd, sorry about that, mm -hmm. sorry about that. When I think about George Floyd crying for his mother, it hit me and it was like, how does that connect to masculinity? Mm -hmm. And really, taking a look back and, and since starting to work on this reading, uh, one of the greatest books I ever read is, Where Do We Go From Here, Community or Chaos, which is Dr. King's last book published before he got assassinated in 68. And reading books like What Men Want by Devon Franklin that talks about is the first modern commentary I've heard from anyone talk about how unhealthy it is for us to go to strip clubs and how much that's a part of our culture. Mm -hmm. I, the first first person I heard say that. Um, and I'm in the South, I'm in Atlanta. This is this is that's culture. That Magic is what City. people do. Magic City. Come on. <laughs> Magic City. Uh uh, it's, it's so many. It's so mm -hmm. many. And so for me, that that simple answer I truly believe is is the best representation of what healthy masculinity is. And in my own words, I think it's comfortable 
being comfortable being yourself and moving in purpose, moving with boldness and being aware of others. Great, great. I love it. Uh, there's been so much progression because like I, I mentioned earlier, the differences in our, our age bracket. And I think men of generations ago that being soft, you know, uh, having that space to share your emotions and be vulnerable or whatever wasn't there or, um, you know, allowed to be accessible as it is today. You know, men are, are it's not there yet, but it's easier for you to move in that space now, you know, and I think that creates a lot of uh, area for a lot of mental unhealthiness when a man is not allowed to uh, express all of his emotions that he's feeling. Absolutely. I, and I think that's one of the roots of why we have so many issues. One, one of the things that I understand and appreciate is that the greatest gem in the universe ever created is a woman. Mm -hmm. But we were built from a structural aspect where when a man does what he's supposed to do, I firmly believe everything else falls in line. Mm -hmm. So a, a lot of our issues today are because we don't, we as men haven't really always been shown like, so you said you're 51, my mom's 56, my dad's 53. I don't think there are many men in that older generation where I could look to and really said, really took the time to tell the young generation, like, this is how you court a lady. This is what you don't do. This is the mistakes that I, these are the mistakes I made. Mm -hmm. You have to walk your own path, but just be aware that that disconnect has really hurt us. And I think a lot of the reasons me being 27 men from a small town where it can get really rough is understanding that a lot of people are just hurt. Mm -hmm. Haven't had the opportunity to express themselves so defensive. You're so defensive because that's our mechanism. That's how we cope with it. And it affects us in our relationships and it affects us when we walk outside our home. So it's something I'm extremely passionate about. It's, you know, I'm in, we haven't talked about this, but I'm actually studying to get a master's right now. I'm in my second year for my master's. And a lot of what I'm going to be focusing on for basically my thesis is how to truly help free the African-American man, how creativity can help free the African-American man because psychologically we, we are heavily still impacted from infrastructures that were destroyed during slavery mm -hmm. we, like it, the wound is so deep we can't just put the band-aid over it and um i think there's a lot of factors and i don't know if we can fit it all in 30 minutes but oh definitely um, not <laughs> definitely but, not that's that's a that's a whole day a full day weekend <laughs> lecture there um right <laughs> but um Talking about masculinity, and, and like I, I said earlier, my thing is relationships. And a lot of times I, I do um, a lot of sit down conversations with young women in, in your age bracket. And one of the baffling things to me is um, people are not happy relationship wise, love wise, seeking a significant other. It's very difficult today and in my age bracket and previous, you found somebody, you loved on them, and you married them until we both went to the grave. Why, especially with brothers and sisters, why, why is it so hard for love to happen for you young folks today? <laughs> it, it's very ironic because amen means love. Mm -hmm. And I'm single, and it's not because I can't be in a relationship. There are beautiful women all over. I think in a lot of ways, a relationship requires selflessness. It requires a level of dedication and commitment to be aware of what and how things impact another human being. I don't want that personally. I'm not interested in that. Mm -hmm. And I think there is a, a, a conflict that has come in our modern era where when you add an element of social media, it kind of puts everything, magnif it magnifies everything. But my favorite book is The Alchemist. And there is a specific quote where it talks about if a man has to step away from his purpose, it's not true love. So I think a lot of people, because I'm in that age range where I've got friends that just got married in the last few years, babies on the way, babies here, X, Y, Z. And I honor and I respect those men for taking that step. I just know 
my purpose is more important than the relationship for me. Mm-hmm. And um, I think a lot of different factors are our country systematically has set things up where even though black women still get disrespected, it's still a major gap between even making the most money between a, a woman and a man. And it's not, I truly don't believe in coincidences. So I think that's a major factor. Mm-hmm. I think not being able to court is a major factor. I think not being able to discipline, like I mentioned Devon Franklin, one of his biggest things is abstinence. I've been blessed to have a relationship with Stefan Speaks and his team. Abstinence and, and being able to have that control, which we all got urges. We all have urges. And I don't think Instagram helps. I have mm-hmm. sat there with, with the pastor three years ago, like, hey man, it says Solomon and David had all these wives and concubines and they didn't have Instagram. Mm-hmm. You telling me I'm supposed to have one. <laughs> so I think I think all of those factors play into it. And I think also I strongly dislike when I hear some women have an attitude or perspective where it's like they don't need a man. Mm-hmm. No, we need each other. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean be dependent. Mm-hmm. But we that's why we were created to to work things together. You know, Eve came from when he created Adam, he said he took Eve from his rib right by his side. And I think the older generations, I remember hearing the statement, oh, behind every black man is a no, she was never supposed to be behind. And that's why so many people are damaged now. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to be right by your side, You're supposed to walk through this thing together. So the, the idea of partnership, I think, is lacking. Uh, the, the me first individualistic perspective on life is lacking. And I truly believe I'm, I come from a home where my parents got divorced when I was four years old. And I've sat with both of them and told them when I had my high school college sweetheart, like she was right there too. I said, listen, I don't want to get divorced straight up. I don't want to walk down the aisle, say vows, then know that I'm not truly all the way in, in that seed that was planted years ago, blossoms 20 mm-hmm. years in, and then it's hurt people, and then it's hurt kids, and I don't really want to be a part of that. And I think a lot of us, because of the information we have now, and we see situations like Will Smith is one of my is, is a childhood hero for sure. See a situation like him and Jada. And, Entanglements. An entanglement, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> And it really, I think it discourages people mm-hmm. because we don't have a uh, a good understanding of how this thing is supposed to work. Now, <clears throat> let me just now let me be difficult. Let me just be difficult. Be okay. difficult. That's what that's what's good. It's provocative. Listen, we gotta we gotta provoke some thought. Because you know, I'm I'm listening to you talk, and I'm I'm <laughs> proud of you and clapping because you want to fulfill your purpose, and you know. Mm. And and all if it if it's a distraction or takes you off your purpose, you don't want to do that. But don't if the right puzzle piece comes along, you know, like Michelle has Barack and you know, the first lady of the pastor, don't you feel that's gonna be a benefit to you? Uh, it's, <clears throat> it's interesting that you bring that up, right? So on my vision board for this year, and I actually had this conversation a couple weeks ago. At, especially after finishing the book. And I said, I've never heard a woman ever in my life say she wanted to be Coretta Scott King. Mm-hmm. Never. Not one time. I hear Michelle, I hear Beyonce, I hear Oprah. I don't really hear Oprah, but I can understand why. I, <laughs> I look at Oprah, me as this, from a media aspect, I really admire Oprah. Mm-hmm. But I've never heard a woman say Coretta Scott. Mm-hmm. And we're human beings. One thing we haven't said each other is that but before any, before I'm even Amy with Kendi Jr., I'm a human. Mm-hmm. We're human beings. Dr. King wasn't perfect, but what the family represents and what they were able to do for human beings is much greater than being on a FaceTime to talk about how stressful the day was. Not to take away from those those pains because everybody, we, it's a day-by-day process, but that's where my mindset is. So if he blesses me with the woman who at the right time when I'm my self-sufficiencies as a man are on par with where they need to be in order to be there for someone, then we'll see. But 
me personally, my perspective on what I want to create and how I know he's positioned things to go, I haven't found that Coretta Scott. Mm -hmm. so. Self-sufficiency, does that translate to finances? Finances, mental, mm. spiritual, physical, emotional. Okay. Everything in alignment. Uh, I'm a firm believer. And my father told me this when I when I graduated from college five years ago. And he said that buy a home, mm. build yourself up first. That way, because I think that happens to us as men a lot too, especially in our community. I was in that situation. Mm -hmm. I was madly in love with someone. She owned a home, but it's her home. So we get into an argument. We don't see eye to eye. I'm a bull. She's a bull because she's been a bull for so long. She kicking me out. I'm not going to sleep at my mama crib. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I can't be fully invested into this situation because if you feel that liberty, you feel that power, this this is this is problematic. Mm -hmm. But as a man, when you establish yourself and you have, have that home and you can now, I don't know a lot of men that will be, I mean, hey, I did watch Martin growing up. He kicked people out. He kicked Gina out at 1.2, but never again. Get the step in. <laughs> Get the step in. Get the step in. He said to Gina one time. Uh, one time. But then he was like, oh, again. no. No, 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 no. So um, <laughs> I think that's that's huge. And I think having the, the foundation fundamentally and mentally to, to appreciate and understand that it's a higher level of respect for self, which then also leads to a higher level of respect for your mate. Okay. And also uh, to digress a little bit about Coretta, uh, I think even after the time that she was blessed to have with Martin, um, she couldn't, she couldn't remember who, who, you know, I think there's a joke flo floating around, like for her to date, sh her, the question she would have to ask is, my late husband had a dream, you don't even have a wish, like <laughs> who, who follows that, you know, so, <laughs> you know. When you're walking in your purpose as a man and you've got this woman, it leaves a way uh, that there's there's just no space for anybody else to feel. So, you know, um, that phenomenal pair, phenomenal fair pairing. And, and so often we do not see that coupling, even like you said, with the imperfections. And, and it's not to say that Coretta was perfect. Martin wasn't either, but the combination of them was the bomb diggity dump. That's it, you know? Okay, I'm a, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna go on because look, we we just talking, <laughs> we just talking. I could we do this forever, but I got other stuff I want to get to. Um, okay, because you're doing some wonderful, wonderful volunteer work, and I love to see young people. Excuse me, you're not young, you're not young, but to me, you're young. Okay, I know you think you've grown, but I could have changed your diapers, so you're not you're not growing <laughs> to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I just think that's so disrespectful because I know you like I'm a man. I'd be like, but baby. <laughs> okay. I understood completely. I understand. Okay. But I, I, I just love to see the young folks giving back and doing it. Th and you you have a wonderful program that you are giving back and you're involved with a program called Morning Star Miracles Foundation. So I need to know what that's about, what you're doing over there, um, because you got some phenomenal stuff over that way. Appreciate that. Um, I'm, I'm really excited for this year. Last year was our first year doing a scholarship. We were able to give away two $1,000 scholarships to two young African-American men uh, who are pursuing degrees in STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. And this year with everything that's happened, we actually want to give, give it away to more students. So this year, our goal is to give away scholarships to two students in Buffalo, one student in Charlotte with one of our board members. And now that I'm in Atlanta, one student here in Atlanta, um, on that same path, African-American pursuing a degree in STEAM, and they have a heavy understanding and the work of giving back to the community. Um, so that's really the basis of the, of the program, of the scholarship right now that we're working on. And um, we actually, I, I'll release this as a, this is a caveat because um, I'm not sure when we'll be dropping this, but I, we just actually reconnected with the two winners from last year. And to hear on one end, one young man, he's just kept going, you know, constantly doing activism. He's an RA, he's the head of like four or five different national committees at RIT. Mm -hmm. So, you know, super, uh, I'm just thankful that he was one of our winners. And the other young man just started working uh, about a month ago professionally 
in the engineering field and he just talked about how much it helped them at that particular time to get those dollars and I know what it was like when you're heading into semester and something happens. I'll never forget. There was a close friend from college. Their, their house burnt down. Their house burnt down in the middle of our, like right between our sophomore and junior year. And you know those type of situations happen mm-hmm. when you're in college and pursuing. So I have a, a, a definite sweet spot for people in those situations. And with everything that's happened this year, we ideally want to help out somebody as they've adjusted to that next semester and uh, just everything that's going on. Because even if though it's virtual, it's it's a major adjustment for the student, the family, the professor. So, you know, okay. something we definitely. So I'm hearing that this is for African-American males, correct? Is uh, there... Students in general, it doesn't have to be males. Okay. Is there a um, time period for applying for the yeah, grant? So actually, yeah, the application is, is available now. If you go to MorningstarMiraclesScholarship.org, all the info is there. You can apply. We will be giving it away in, in December, around holiday time. Okay. So, so everybody um, got to get on the ball. What What are the yeah. requirements for applying for a grant? Uh, the requirements for the scholarship, uh, 3.5 or higher GPA. There's a 300 to 500-word essay. Um there's a there's a third element. Oh, and there's also got to be a portion talking about your community service. Okay. Um, so so those are the the basics of it. Um, and then, like I said, have a degree going towards anything within STEAM. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. Now one more thing, and then I will let you go for the day because you know Atlanta is just popping. That's one of my favorite little <laughs> get a, get get away. Although I haven't been able to do it in COVID, but it's one of my my cities I do like to visit. Um, but you have uh, an online course, right? Shift up. Is, did I read that correctly? So I actually have not started the online course yet. So that'll be something in the future. Okay. Um, but right now, what I'm really trying to get in the hands of people is there's a free quote ebook that they can get. If you text motivator to 21,000, you download the quote book. Um, it touches on some of the things we talked about as far as relationships. It talks about conversations with God, love. Um, those are some of the sections in there. Okay. Uh, there will be a course in the future right now, working on some things. I want to improve want to prove some things before we do that again okay gotcha ain't no ain't mad at that and, and you're going to school currently right yes i am are you um you're down in atlanta so are you guys actually back on campus or you're doing online courses everything is virtual um thankfully so uh, like as soon as we wrap up this i'm gonna be getting on a call with some classmates so okay great <laughs> great, great all right yes. yeah because your your mayor down there she she was uh she was holding it down uh, yeah, I mean, it's been interesting to be here during this time for sure. Um, I remember during the summer when she caught COVID and said, okay, we're going back to phase one. And then an hour later, Governor Kemp was like, no, no, we're not yes, going back to phase indeed. one. And I, was yes. like, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just, okay. I just want to stay alive. I just want to stay alive. All right, Amy, we're going to do the uh, question of the day. And then I want you to let everybody know how they connect with you. Once again, I, I, I wrote down the text, the 21,100, but I want you to tell everybody how they connect with you for all the other stuff you've got going on. So we're going to do the random question. Uh Oh, uh oh, Uh-oh, let's see what we got. We're going to pry into the introvert's life here. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, this one's easy. This one's easy. Which is mm. better? Which is better? Cats or dogs? I have to go with neither. I, I have never. Dude, we can't be friends. We can't be friends. I thought this was a good interview. We was getting along fine and everything. Well, it's been nice. Got to go. Uh, <laughs> I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Neither? Who don't? I'm... You know, that's a little suspicious when somebody don't like animals. Like, <laughs> next thing you're going to tell me, you don't breathe air. Or you, what, what, what? Maybe. Vibranium. Oh, hey, now. <laughs> um, no. Yeah, for me personally, I've never owned a pet. So I don't have a preference either way. 
I love lions, but I, so I'm. But I you would have one as a pet. To, I wouldn't have one as a pet unless my name was Michael Jackson. But like, <laughs> I, I, I am not I'm justifiably crushed. able to actually, answer that I question. Like, I was like, oh, this is a pretty nice dude. I kind of <laughs> like him. Just ruined the whole interview. Just mess. Just bust my bubble. Neither. Neither. I like humans. They're suspect. At least <laughs> pets are guaranteed. You know they're going to wake up and be a fur ball of love day after day, unconditional. Humans are suspect. They wishy-washy. They are, but they understand English a little bit better. Cats are creepy to me. Every time I've been in somebody's house with a cat, their cat is just like secretly finding ways to creep up on something, whether it be you, whether it be their little cat area, they're just uh, so you just you've just you just dug your hole a little bit deeper because I I'm a cat owner. Oh, I thought you were a dog owner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just you just screwed the whole thing. <laughs> How can you put your foot out your mouth? And, okay, well, um, <clears throat> you won't be on anybody's Christmas list. <laughs> I tell you that. All righty. I was like, okay. Uh, well, anyways, let me be professional. Don't everybody ain't gotta <laughs> like what I like or nothing, you know. It is a little suspect. Lions are great. You can't own no lion. <laughs> don't be trying to make did. don't be trying to make it better. Don't be trying to make it better. Lion King <laughs> is my favorite movie. Yeah, okay. That sounds good, but that's, <laughs> it ain't gonna happen. Go on and tell every tell the people how they get in touch with you. While I'm over here disappointed, tell everybody how they get connect with you. Everyone uh, to reach me, I, I strongly recommend you. You find me on Instagram at Sir Amazing, but you can get all my information by texting the word Motivator in all caps to twenty one thousand two one zero 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 Motivator in all caps to twenty one thousand. Bring you everything. You can download your personal copy of. Uh, free quote ebook. You have the link to everyone needs a hero. Why can't it be you? And then you'll be able to access whatever else you want to learn. And you can yell at me about cats and dogs. And <laughs> trust me, I'm writing this down right now. I got some stuff to say. And how do people pick up the book, dear? Uh, so right when you when you text motivated to twenty one thousand, there's gonna be two buttons you can press. You can press the button to get to everyone needs a hero. Why can't it be you? And then you can also download the quote book right on your phone. So. You probably would fulfill your purpose quicker if you had a pet. I'm just saying, you know, it would probably uh, fall into line if you had a pet, you know. They got to be changed. I mean, I'm a good uncle. I'm a great uncle, actually. So I'll stick to that. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm just a little distraught about the whole pet thing. That just changed my whole day. <sighs> Somebody don't like animals. You're such a suspect. <laughs> You know, just suspect. Anyway, you got a, you got an honest answer. Most people would just pick one. They will they will run away from the pressure. Probably you probably eat liver or or or, 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 or something like that. You just weird, probably. <laughs> I do not eat liver. Liver and onions, probably your fa You probably one of them strange. No. You probably eat beets and stuff. You one of them strange people that do all that. You somebody don't like pets, eh? Anyway, anyways, Mister Amazing, you are simply amazing. Really, you are. Without the dislike of pets, you are simply amazing. I want to thank you for your time today. I truly appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. I yeah. definitely enjoyed the convo. I did. I had a wonderful time chatting with you. Everybody, that is all for this week's episode of The Male Perspective. Everybody else, go get you a pet, like a pet, go adopt a pet at the shelter. Don't listen to what this man got to say. Pets are wonderful. Until next time, I'm your host, Lana Reed, and I will see you all. <laughs>